Kenya is, tonight, Kenya's opposition leaders say their banned rally, postponed today, will go ahead tomorrow. This, as the Attorney General warned, the country is fast degenerating into a catastrophe of unimaginable proportions. Earlier, police fired shots and water cannon to disperse protesters in Nairobi. Dead bodies still lie in the streets. An investigation will now be held into the disputed elections which sparked the violence and President Mwai Kibaki claimed he would be ready for talks once the unrest had calmed. But British tour operators have suspended holidays to Kenya until the violence ends. Our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Miller reports now from Nairobi and I should warn you his report contains some graphic images of the mayhem. In Mathare's riverside slum, the killing started early this morning. It is shockingly brutal. Human skulls hacked open by men with pangas, machetes. We are killing each other. We will finish each other off, this woman laments. I will never vote again. They're killing my husband down there, this woman says. She's a Kikuyu, the tribe of the president accused of stealing the election. Please come, she says. At her husband's side, she says to him, you are not going to die, but I am dying, he tells her. His attackers were Luo, the tribe of the presidential challenger who claims he was cheated. Kikuyu killing Luo, Luo killing Kikuyu. The disputed election result has opened a Pandora's box. We don't know whether her husband died. She fears the worst. What have I done wrong, God, she wails. This man is just sitting dazed in the street. Somehow, he survived his head being hacked open. Down the road, the local Red Cross are removing another body, a man who's been stoned to death. I'd like to appeal to my compatriot to be able to come to their senses and stop this senseless killing and we live like brothers and sisters in peace and harmony. God forbid this thing does not continue anymore. These distressed people are begging police to help rescue a Kikuyu woman they say has been dragged off by Luo to be raped. Across the country now, there are maybe 100,000 people who fled the spiraling violence, which continues unabated in the Rift Valley to the west and in Mombasa on the coast. We went to Kabira, Nairobi's northern slum where a million people live, mostly Luo. There's been much looting and burning and killing here. Kabira sealed off by police now to prevent its angry residents from marching to a big opposition rally. But as we went in, we found men armed with crowbars on their way out. A crowd of men outside a church. We tried to find out what was going on, but in a moment it all turned nasty. These men, a Luo gang who call themselves the Taliban. The pastor of the church, we learn, neither Kikuyu or Luo, but he's a suspected supporter of Mwai Kibaki, the president. We're having to leave in a hurry here. There's a, there's a group of people who've been trying to get into the church up there. They've actually set it on fire. It's a small tribal group called the Kamba. The group outside it are Luo. They've attacked it. They want the people dead. They've gone in with the shepherds. No peace in Kenya. Later, we approached the burning church from another direction. Onlookers in a state of shock, although we don't think anyone did die here. Everyone wondering, though, what's suddenly been unleashed. Echoes of Rwanda in Kenya. Armed police unable to stop thousands pouring out of the slum and trying to get to the rally. All shouting in support of the man they think should be president, Raila Odinga. The police playing cat and mouse with these demonstrators all day. Another march starts in a parallel street led by Odinga's people. They're heading for Uhuru Park in central Nairobi. Not far down the road, they're intercepted by police. There's a standoff, and then they push on through, past the police. Further on, they're confronted again. This time, a live round's fired, and tear gas, too, stops them in their tracks. We want peace, they chant. We want change. With his rally banned, Raila Odinga invited journalists to accompany him on a bizarre and ghoulish press tour of Nairobi mortuary. We watched as he inspected refrigerators full of corpses most bloodied, including many tiny children. Odinga described what he saw here as genocide. Can you do anything to stop what's going on? 
I cannot do anything because I've been denied the opportunity to do so by one Mwai Kibaki, who is right now illegally sitting in the State House. This is something that this country does not deserve. This country wants change, and it voted for change. Mwai Kibaki, having sat it out all day today, gave a news conference this evening. I am ready to have dialogue. With, other, with the concerned parties once the nation is calm and the political temperatures are lowered enough for constructive and productive engagement. But the temperature is still red hot. These horrific images come from the Dandora district of Nairobi, showing a man being slowly hacked to death today by a gang wielding machetes. He is left for dead on the street. Another of what is now more than 300 people murdered in cold blood here in just under a week. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, Nairobi.